<laughs> Good morning, and you're very welcome to Awaken the Heart. And I have two very special guests with me today. I have Mystic David Hoffmeister, and I have the delightful Nikita Sparks. So thank you both for joining us. And they've just returned from um, a, an amazing tour of California, and so I think they're going to share a little bit right off first thing with us about that trip. Yeah, this, uh, I felt that this year would be very spontaneous because it's a, it's like a memory inside of me. I, I think of my very life and beings being very spontaneous, and I was open to world travels, but even the world travels, I think, are going to be spontaneous from now on very quick. And so, yeah, I just I was in Mexico. I called Nikita up and say, you want to go on a trip through California? And she said, yes. And then uh, the, everything just flowed from that. We didn't even need tour coordinators or anything. It was just so easy and simple. It just came and full. But uh, usually when we come back from those, we share about our experiences. Maybe we could just share with everybody a little bit about how it went from the starting from the starting flight to the closing flight. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was. Uh, need I say that when David uh, called, all all we like it was like, would you like to go with me to California? It's like yes. Nothing was planned, and he said, "Well, I'll meet you on Wednesday at 8:30 a.m. at LAX." That was it, and then from there it's like, and then we'll see what's going on. And uh, literally within a day, everything just got full. Like we ended up having a retreat and like four evening gatherings within what like ten days mm -hmm. or something, mm -hmm. and it just got so packed and then I, I was I kept hearing the word over capacity like we're gonna be over capacity like and then I always I'm like I don't really I never look to the form of it because it felt like the excitement was over capacity <laughs> so <laughs> I I just left it at that so I I wasn't like oh that means uh, we have like there's gonna be a lot of people or something I didn't even go there but I was like it's over capacity but we did end up actually even in form over capacity and then one of our friends uh, new friends who invited us um zach he was like maybe we should stop promoting this because <laughs> i think we're going to be over capacity i was like really i like do not touch <laughs> like just leave it i'd like to i would really like to see that and then i did <laughs> and so it was um uh, yeah, I was just like, I was saying something like it feels, everything feels really new, like these days. And, uh, like I said, the tour was like, it just felt, it was so out of the blue and so out of time and space that, and like, it felt so full, but it felt like everything arranged by itself. And even like our tour co coordinator was calling me, Ricky, and she'd be like, can I help you? Like, don't you have something for me? And I'm like, I had the same th thought. Shouldn't I have something for you? And I'm like, it's doing it by itself. Nothing. I it's like, it's just doing it. And, and so, and, uh, yeah, and so like I was saying, everything feels like so, so brand new, and it's like the whole tour, I kept saying through the whole tour, this is all brand new, this is very, very new, and and then at some point I said like, uh, well, it's totally new, because I've never traveled with David before, and Sam was like, what are you talking about, like, what about that tour, that tour, I was like, huh, and I'm like, something is new. <laughs> 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 but it felt like, because uh, I'm like, well, then it wasn't like this. <laughs> it's like there's something different this time. It's almost like I remember, like, yeah, technically, I think there were other tours, but it was like, but not like this. And I couldn't even, uh, I couldn't even explain why. But I'm like, this is, I'm like, this has just never happened before. Like, this is all, like, so totally new. Like, I've never had that. Mm. So. So that was like the whole experience, and then, uh, and then I I started hearing David actually because I was like, I, like something's different. I mean, something's new. Like I can't put it in form and just try to pinpoint why is it new. 
And and then I just started hearing uh, David. He was just talking about the purpose that it's like underneath it all. There's just a strong uh, sense of coming together, just in a very strong purpose for healing only. Like just like just that kind of a joining. And then the tool was given like that. And 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 then when I heard that I was like that's what it is like there's something like brand new and pure and I'm like and I'm like that's the only thing that made sense there's like this purity and like this purity like uncompromising in the like uncompromised like purity in purpose and that's the only thing and it's all, again like we have a book purpose is the only choice and it's like purpose is the only new like the way I've experienced it and that and the more and I'm like and th that just clicked and then I started like I was like saying that they're like although everything got like I knew everything I was telling Ricky I'm like I know everything about the store I know even things I know even things I don't know I know <laughs> so she was like I can feel it <laughs> and it had to be like that not so that I could like handle anything because it's kind of like I could rest my mind in it and not try to like you know figure anything out or anything and just allow for this deep healing almost like expect surprises and there were like surprises and some deep deep patterns in the mind were started to come up real fast and in the and again at some point it was like these are same old patterns same old beliefs but I'm like something is new hmm. and again there's just like the purpose and I kept feeling like there's the support and I could just feel it disappear so mm -hmm. fast and again that was fascinating to me too and I mean like I got hit at some point to a point where like something came up this pattern to get and I literally got sick and it was like wow like and that and in the end I was like I don't like I was saying expect happy surprises they're not going to be bad surprises and then I'm like, I don't even know anymore what's a good surprise and what's a bad surprise. <laughs> it's like, be ready for everything. And just, mm -hmm. and when I join with David around it, he's like, well, when there's a clarity of purpose and the goal, then it's just, this is where everything aligns in a way that no matter what happens, it's all just to bring the mind into that peace of mind and that's all if that's the goal and so it, nothing can go wrong in that and so if ever, anything goes seemingly wrong or there's a tendency like like what's going on like did something go wrong it's just a matter of like setting up the goal in a very clear way once again like repurpose and um, yeah so that was the nature of the tour <laughs> <laughs> that's beautiful it was beautiful because um yeah, it was like the purpose is where everything's brand new, and it seems like with the symbols that come, some we've had a lot of interactions with, uh, like uh, Frances Romero, who's often on these shows, and, and Kay, mm -hmm. right there, Kay, she she came up the mountain. In fact, she came via, I guess it was, was it New Mexico, via yeah. southern Utah, and then across over to uh, California, and then up to Panga Canyon, it's funny we put the first uh, retreat out as Topanga Canyon, but we were actually on up on the top of the mountain. So it was kind of funny, symbolically, that people had to climb up this mountain from Topanga Canyon and come up to the top of the mountain to meet with us. And and uh, and then our last gathering too was was with a woman, Diane, who had been on virtual here on digital joinings like this, but had never ever hosted. I think I did a one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, Eric helped set me up a one-on-one -on -one there in San Rafael with her and she was going through emotions of her daughter leaving at that time and um, so she was like, oh this is all brand new for me. Uh, mm -hmm. We stayed with her and then we stayed with our friend Sundari who we've I've stayed with many times but but it was beautiful just in the sense of being embraced and welcomed in and I would wish that experience on everyone to to just get lit up with the joy of, of happy laughter with the awareness and the connection to the source and who you truly are and then be inspired to just share and extend that. And of course we're doing that digitally, we're doing that through 
writings and audios and and YouTubes and many many ways live streaming and this and this or it could be just at home playing with your cat and your dog and or it could be just rejoicing there seemingly in the solitude of your room uh, just singing the praises and ha singing a happy tune you know there's no form specific to what it is but it's just an attitude that gets expressed and also it was beautiful that we were so spontaneous where the, the the word just went out coming through California and then people started contacting Nikita. Coming through California, David and Nikita write to me, Nikita, and and then there were people writing, but then even that was all like part of a prearranged plan and script because Nikita would f feel the invitations come in and then she would sometimes have call, a phone call or a Skype call, and then she would have this recognition, like, that's like the home. one. Yeah, like this extremely, like, that I couldn't, like, extremely warm feeling, like, I was like, oh, this is, like, home, I can just relax into that, and that was always, like, my cue, and I was like, if there's anything that I can never doubt, it's this, and like I said, every, like, it was just so brand new, like like the host, the people. So mm -hmm. it was like that was kind of like the only way to know what is it really. And it's like, oh, this is of the spirit. Like this is, like this is it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's almost like too that I just realized when I got to California. I think I've mentioned that I've been looping around the, the country and the world. But I started uh, traveling in this kind of purpose or spirit twenty five years ago and and I went through California and Southern California and Northern California and I think like, oh, it's like the Truman Show the body's on a loop I've been in so much glee and joy and now um, it's looping around but it's you know I can almost you know I hear these songs in my mind and spirit just keeps serenading me with all these songs every day and a lot of them are just from dear friends you know like uh, Shanti Aman and Shanti or Donna Marie Carey or Lisa Moore, or all, all the ones we've had in our community, Eric, Helena, you know, just Ricky and Kirsten, and all of the songs just go through. But I, uh, I had that uh, song from Aman and Shanti uh, called The Promise. Once you have accepted his plan as the one function that you will fulfill, there will be nothing else the Holy Spirit will not arrange for you. Without your effort, he will go before you, making straight your path and leaving in your way no stones to trip on and no obstacles to bar your way. No stones to trip on, no obstacles to bar your way. I get these songs, and certainly when I seem to be out on the road, I'm like, oh, here it is. It's all involuntary, invitations come. Happiness is shared, joy is shared. Uh, we meet some people that we seem to have met before, and some new ones, but they're all the same in the purpose. It's like a, it's like a chorus of the sameness, like we're just drawing forth witnesses to our mind of happiness and joy, and that's how we know we're in the tractor beam of the kingdom of heaven is by the joyful reflections that we draw. Because while you even believe there's something outside of your mind, and you believe in symbols, then happy symbols are pretty convincing. It's nice to be surrounded by happy symbols. And and I think also, even though it, it, it just kind of came in spontaneously, but but uh, Nikita was with me on that visit to uh, Judy Scutch and, mm. and Witt and the whole group there, Deborah and the whole gang, and, and it's been so helpful just what we've shared, but maybe, you, you know, we went... Um, to lunch, and it was a four and a half hour lunch, and I, I've mentioned it already, but maybe you can share what was going on in your mind during those four and a half hours. Sure, that was kind of fun. my experience. Yeah. Like, um, huh. It was like a dream. <laughs> <laughs> it was, uh, it was like, it was a mystical experience, like, Totally, like uh, through the whole thing, like I don't know consciously what a mystical, like intellectually, what a mystical experience is. It would it usually, you know, spirit explains afterwards. By the way, this is what it was, you know, because like in the moment it's just like, whoa, what's? 
like what's going on and uh as soon as we got there oh i don't know like first of all i kept hearing like days like like a few days before that i kept hearing the same song like ever since i found out that we're gonna go and uh, we're gonna go visit judy <laughs> sketch i don't know why it's funny but i started hearing the song over and over and over it's okay this is just the end <laughs> over and over and over oh it's just every that's time, the like, end of me and then <laughs> yeah, yeah like um it's great yeah and then isn't that great <laughs> she's on her way to meet judy sketch and she's hearing the end of me song playing in her mind <laughs> the end of me <laughs> yeah and then again it would just step and then again somebody would like oh so how's do how's uh like mention would mention like the lunch and then he'd be like it's okay this is just the end <laughs> and i'm like what is going on here and then so there was like uh some kind and i'm like what what's going on and like uh and i c and then i could at some point i i could just hear that it's like this is good like something's gonna happen like it's it's just a miracle like it's uh somehow that whole thing is given to release the past and I, i'm I, like okay i'm already <laughs> it left her speechless yeah because they took us out to the sunshine first and we just were sitting out by the water just basking in the sunshine and it was just so surreal and then when we finally went inside to eat, we were at this big round table, and oh, the spirit was just pouring through in here and there and everywhere, and this and this. And then I don't know how many hours were we were an hour or two or whatever into the lunch, it was just all time just disappeared. I Judy was sitting right next to me. She dropped her her little napkin three times, so I was like, I was the handmaiden picking up the napkin. She, oh. To bring, give it to her, and then suddenly Judy starts squinting and looking over, right at Nikita, who's directly across from Judy, and just going, "Nikita, you are so bright," <laughs> and Nikita just was there. You probably were just listening to that song in your mind, <laughs> just and watching the end of the of the world, the world disappearing before your eyes, and she she picked up on it. Mm. She she certainly tuned into that. It was like at that point. Like everything was just there was a lot of like there was a lot of exchange, seemingly verbal exchange, like deep, very, per, like very deep conversation. Like we didn't, it didn't stop. But my experience was that it was just like complete silence, like complete stillness, and and I could just like I could feel myself disappearing in it, and there's nothing I could add to it. And this is where I kept hearing. Like I couldn't, like I didn't understand, obviously, and I could just hear, just behold, behold, behold. It's like I found myself just sitting, like, kind of like really, like wow, like what, like what is this? And and then I could hear, like, just behold, behold, just stay with it and behold. And uh, it was um, like it was just all of a sudden I just. I had this feeling like, oh, this is super dreamy. Just everything is just super dreamy. And then again, that song, it's, I'm like, it's okay. This is just the end. And then I'm like, and this is where I was like, oh my God, some something just started like in my mind putting like two and two together. Cause I'm like, this is super dreamy. First of all, my whim has always been um, to meet one of the original four and I and I've always felt like it was going to be Judy for some reason like mm. that was going to be the one and so and I'm like what is going on that these major whims are coming in like that and uh, and it's all like for purpose like and and everything just again like everything's okay just behold and then I just I just started to wit like I was just witnessing like um, just a miracle there's again this feeling of like this is so fresh this is so new and fresh and everything was just reflecting that and and then there was wit and Judy that 
84 and 87 and yet like everything they looked so almost like you can't find that kind of youngness in form it's like this feeling of being so young it's all like it's like it's not in form it's like it's like it's like there's something like like eternal there's like eternity's calling and again it was like this like there's such newness it's like there's something that I just like again it's like like something about the symbols of it that how it's just how deep it is and it's like and there's like this connection and playfulness like I could it's like I at some point I didn't even know who was one of them like mm-hmm. who is who there's just this playfulness of the spirit and um and like at a time I didn't even know it was like after I was like kind of like it was after we left I was kind of like okay what just happened and so um so and then as I was beholding like as I was there like that and then at some point Judy went like oh Nikita so <laughs> so she asked me a few questions and I was like oh yeah yeah and uh, and that she was like I I'd like to talk because she's like talking spirit is just pouring through her <laughs> like I I mean like force and then she's like I'd like to talk about Nikita right now. <laughs> so, Nikita, how did you meet David? So how, like, um, so I, I told her the whole thing, the whole story, how I came, uh, how I came around, and then she was like, "Well, it worked out for you." <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I was like, you can't, like, it's almost like, isn't it like obvious, like? And, like, and the best part of it always is is that that miracles are natural when they do not occur. Something's gone wrong. It's ordinary miracles. You can you can look around the room or the place you are right now, and if you just pause and are still and let your eyes just kind of move around the room, you can hear that same voice in you going, "Behold, behold, behold, my child!" Like it's so reverent. Like, we are all the child of God, and and this beautiful voice that's speaking for God within us is like, Behold, my child, behold, behold, look around you at what seems to be the ordinary, or what seems to be the veil, or the familiar, and I am there with you. I am with you always, even unto the end of time. You know, this this beautiful, sacred reverent voice and you know that we're, we're sharing the experience it's just we're trying to let the words come through to share the experience of the heart but it's it's truly not about special people or special places or there's nothing special in this world there's there really are no sacred spots on earth uh, there are no points in all of the cosmos that are more special than any other point because in the quantum field, everything is collapsed, everything is unified. And the same reverence, the same force that, that Nikita was just talking about is, it just so wants to move through us, and in us, and as us, and, and merge completely with us, so that we feel we're lifted up on high, and that we are this sacred experience. Uh, I like the part in the Course where Jesus was saying, you are the goal the world is searching for. Isn't that lovely? You can try it on. I am the goal the world is searching for. Maybe we never heard that from our parents, but maybe we had a divine parent that really wants us (laughs) to hear that now. I am the goal the world is searching for. You can look at all the images of the world and everybody seeming scurrying around to try to make money, or make love, or make products, and expand expand something, and it's go, 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 and then this beautiful presence is like, you are the world, you are the goal the world is searching for, but not a personal you, it's not a, it's not a David, or a Nikita, or a Sarah you, it's, it's a Christ, it's a Christ being, that's what the world is searching for, the, it's trying to remember its true identity, literally the I am presence before the world was formed and it's so strong it's like it's calling all of us it's like it's playing all of us like like a symphony like we're all instruments 
and it's playing us in this beautiful symphony. So it's, you know, I think that's the thing that we carry with us, was that as surreal as that was, as dreamy as that was, as expansive as that was, it's it's ordinary. That's that's what our ordinary natural state of being is. And when we're not feeling that way, then we should pause to go, hmm, what is it that I'm thinking about myself? Because I must be thinking about the whole universe or the way I'm thinking about myself. If I have a doubt thought about any brother or sister, I mean the slightest doubt thought, then I, I hold that same doubt thought about my true self, my true identity. And I'm holding a doubt thought about the Christ. And meanwhile, the Christ is saying, oh, behold, behold how glorious we are. Behold what a beautiful creator we have. Behold all the love. You know, it, it doesn't even recognize the doubt. It just acknowledges the truth of us. It's very powerful. You almost can't stay on the ground. You almost feel like you're going to start levitating. Uh, and some of us have. We actually have one person in our community that actually levitated uh, and, and observed herself, the body going up off of the earth. And um, and they used to think that that uh, saints were crazy when they would levitate, but some of us are reluctant saints that don't <laughs> don't get too shocked if you if you find yourself levitating because because that's just a symbol to your mind. There's nothing special about levitating, even you know it should it shouldn't be shocking. You know you should be open in your mind to all outcomes, uh, any outcome. And Lise was telling me that uh, you guys were on a trip, and um, was it down in the southwest? And then all of a sudden, they were driving along in the car, and there was this blazing light that came, mm -hmm. and it was so bright that the cars had to, all the cars had to stop. It wasn't like a, a UFO kind of in the distance or whatever. It no, was. We couldn't see anything. They couldn't see anything. Nothing. They literally, you know, they. Had, what did you guys have sunglasses on? Uh, didn't help. Didn't help. We, did, we they tried putting sunglasses on. That didn't help. It was like they just rolled right into a whole a holy instant, the great rays, and they and they were just like, "What is happening?" It was so brilliant. Maybe you can share about what. That. Yeah, it just like the sun came over. And everything just disappeared. We couldn't see the cars up front. We couldn't see anything. There's and and it wasn't like a flash. It just wouldn't go. I think it lasted for half an hour at least. <laughs> and then we just didn't. We we're like we don't know where we're going. Like we tried putting on sunglasses, and it didn't work at all. And so we kind of intuitively felt like we could drive at a certain speed, like five miles an hour or something. At some point we'd stop. And then we're like, we don't know what's going to happen from now on. We just don't know. It's like, like, there's like all kinds of cars and stuff. And, but we're like, this could be our last moment. We just don't know. And there's nothing we can do. Like we, like there's nothing we can do, but we're like, like behold, yeah. we, we were like, well, it felt like everything was just disappearing and, uh, and we're like, we don't know if we're going to come out alive or anything, but we're like, well, maybe, may this be the last moment. It's like... That's like, like your song. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> this is just the end. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> and there's also in that song, the, the end of me is not the enemy. Mm. Yeah. The end of me is not the enemy. You know, when we think of the cessation of a personality self, for most human beings, that brings up fear, because it's the fear of death. But these miracles are showing us, are leading us into the atonement, which is this experience that there is no death. That as you experience yourself as who you are, there is no death. It was, judgment was death. It was pain, suffering, hurt, anything, any experience that was not supremely joyful was death. Boredom was death. Everything that you experience in the world that's not supreme happiness is death. So when you free your mind of that kind of thinking, when you say, I don't have to think like that anymore, when you make way for all those happy thoughts, then you go into the resurrection. But the resurrection doesn't have anything to do with the body. You can accept the resurrection 
before the body and the world disappear. In fact, that's how it works. You have to have a happy dream first. You're not going to wake up without a happy dream. But as you accept that resurrection in your mind, you just, it's like surreal, like you're just watching the world in a happy state of mind, and there is no enemy, there is no death. And so there is no change. It's not like, uh, like you're there going, okay, what's going to happen to me now? In that state of mind, everything becomes the same. And then as the Course says, God will take the final step. Some people always ask me, that's, that sounds amazing, but what, what does that even mean? God will take the final step. Well, God doesn't really take steps. But what is waking up except coming back into a state of eternity, eternal creation? into a state where you are truly creative as a as an eternal being, that's the so-called final step. It just seems like going from perception back to abstraction is a step, but it's, it's not really a step at all because, why? Perception never really was there at all. You're not going to go back to heaven and go, oh, let me tell you my war stories. Whoa, I was killed and I killed and I did all this stuff down there and then I made it through, you know. No, there's, it's like, that was all amnesia of heaven, and when you have reverse amnesia, you forget the world, and only light and love remain. So, so we're all in the process of reverse amnesia now. Okay, we had amnesia, we forgot God. Now let's turn it on the ego and do a little amnesia uh, on the ego. Forget the ego, and remember God. We can we can play that game. You want to play a little amnesia? Let, we'll play it with the Holy Spirit's help. We'll turn the tables. We're going to remember God and forget the world. And when we talk about forgetting the world, no trace, no trace, no memory of a past, no memory of stories, no memory of of struggles, no memory of, of pains, and no memory of pleasures. All of them gone because they never were at all. So that's really what this is all about. That's what some people call it the rapture. Mm. <laughs> that sounds like a pretty much of a rapturous experiment, experience where the light just takes over and you can't do anything. <laughs> the doer is, is done <laughs> in that moment. It's great. Well, this is a very practical and interactive show, so mm. what we did yesterday was we opened it up. We have a glorious studio audience here, and we have a glorious Periscope mm. audience there, and we have a glorious Zoom <laughs> It sounds kind of interesting. Zoom. Live, Zoom, and Periscope. <laughs> yeah, they're all good words. <laughs> Supportive. Yeah. We actually, we have, um, Charles had had something come up into awareness after that video you had seen. Mm. Um, and it, it, it actually feels very uh, on point for what you're sharing about now, about the seeming energetic universe that we're all talking about and mo like moving through and, and stages and, and it's symbolically, but also then like that the quantum field isn't heaven. So he just had a question about that, and I don't know if you feel to ask it specifically. feels good, because it, it, it really lines up with mm -hmm. where you were go taking us experientially. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. Okay. Charles, all the way, he's coming, walking in here from South Africa. <laughs> <laughs> it's a quantum field. <laughs> <laughs> Great, yeah, well, David, um, <clears throat> Brief context, I started a spiritual discussion group in South Africa about six and a half years ago. And um, I had a lot of different speakers come in. And a lot of them would talk about um, you know, energy healing and this kind of thing. And we would watch videos like What the Bleep and The Secret and all that kind of stuff. And um, I've often got the sense that People, when you talk about the quantum field or when, when we talked about things like the quantum realm, people kind of saw this as the equivalent of the spiritual domain, that it was just this domain of pure energy and somehow that was the spiritual realm. And in fact, when I named that group, it felt very, it was one of the things that for me felt very guided, even though at that stage I didn't really understand guidance very well, but was to call it affinity spiritual discussion forum and that came from before and beyond infinity because I had a sense that somehow where we were going was beyond all concepts of things like energy and so on 
But whenever I tried to kind of explain those, that idea or discuss it with anyone, I kind of got this feeling, well, it's almost like we stop at that level of it's all about energy. And um, as I understand the course, you know, you, you've said, in fact, in your quantum forgiveness stuff that it's the quantum field is the equivalent, as I understand it, of the forgiven world or the real world. Mm -hmm. But in fact, we're going beyond that. So it's, I just feel it's kind of important not to get stuck there. Yeah. If, if that makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'd like, just like to hear what you, your views well, are. That's good. That. You know, the, the I am presence, some of you might remember in the Bible, Jesus said, before Abraham was, I am. And we could just substitute the word cosmos for Abraham. Before cosmos was, I am. So the entire cosmos is just the past. And yet, when we say the past, we, we talk about images and so on and so forth, but the scientists are saying, well, it's beyond the images. You know, it's like, you, it, it seems to be images, and then the smaller you go, there seems to be trillions and trillions and atoms, and then subatomic particles, and then into energy, just this connective mm -hmm. energy. And so that is a, a very good symbol of forgiveness. And we could say also, though, that, that people have said, what is your proof of God? And quantum physicists will say, well, we do have a proof of God now, and it's, it's quantum physics. It's the quantum field. Or uh, Christians would say, it's, uh, it's the, the salvation through Jesus Christ. Or Buddhist may say, uh, aligning and, and finding the Buddhahood within yourself. And it goes by different traditions. But we could say that all of those seeming roadways, all are, will be forgotten at some point, because there are no roadways in what is. What is is just a, a state of pure light. But this light isn't even energy. That's just a unified energy field is a beautiful symbol of the gateway to that light. Mm -hmm. But we could say that, that, that in heaven there is no science, in heaven there is no religion, or in heaven there is no theology, in heaven there is no philosophy, in heaven there is no humans. You know, when people talk about being fully human, that doesn't mean anything either. It, it's a construct that's a, a learning device. And that's what the early uh, humanistic psychologists were talking about, about realize your full potential. Or transpersonal psychology, re recognize your true self. But all of those things are, are, we might say, means to come into the present moment, which is the gateway to eternity. And eternity is what it's all about. Now having said that, I love it in the Course where Jesus says, um, this Course does not aim at teaching the meaning of love. So what does that mean? This course does not aim at teaching the meaning of heaven. This course does not aim at teaching the meaning of nirvana. It does aim at removing the obstacles to the awareness of love's presence, God's presence, heaven's presence, nirvana's presence. And therefore, that is the goal of the course. So, we may use words like abstraction, God, eternity, oneness, nirvana, heaven, but, but again, those aren't the state itself, because the word isn't the state. The word is just a pointer. It's like the Zen master pointing at the moon. Sometimes people try to analyze the posture of the Zen master, and oh, look at the finger of the Zen master, and the other position of the finger. Look at that arm is spectacular. No, no. <laughs> the Zen master inside is going, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm pointing to the light. Take your gaze off of the Zen master and turn your gaze to the light, which is really like Spirit saying, take your gaze away from the form of everything and turn to the silence within. That in the end, forget this world, forget this course, and come with holy empty hands unto your God. It's calling us into a, an actual remembrance of a real state of mind. So, having said what I just spoke about, I would say also that we need to rejoice in whatever symbols everyone wants to use. And, and when Charles sent me that uh, less than 15 minute video mm -hmm. of a young man, uh, maybe 32, 33, sure, I believe I'm in. yeah, he was just expressing this wonderful, simple expression of letting go of the idea that there is such a thing as an external world. 
and it was a beautiful expression. And when I say I love to see all the beautiful expressions, whether it's a, a concerto that someone's playing and you get transported through merging your mind with the concerto, or you're watching an athlete or something in the Olympics, you know, why is it that, you know, a lot of us, when we would turn in the Olympics, you know, we'd be watching all the different things and then the ice dancing is on, the ice dancing pairs. There's something mesmerizing about ice dancing pairs that we go, Ooh, and then got the music come on and they, and oh, they're going like this. And Ooh, sometimes you can just let your mind go and merge with the one when you're watching ice dancing. Because it's just, everything's just flowing, flowing. And if you have a thought to forgive, then they crash, and then you go, oh, you know, <laughs> and then you have to forgive that, <laughs> forgive that, you know, because that's part of the dance, too. You know, the crash is part of the dance. Then we move, we watch the movie All of Me, and at the end of the movie, it's it's the struggle going on in the mind between these two voices, Lily Tomlin and Steve Martin, in Steve Martin's mm -hmm. body, seemingly. And at the end, it's just those two dancing, 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 and then how it ends is they crash <laughs> at the end, and we all left, you know. Because we could tell that was all part of it, too. That it wasn't a bad thing. So, so really, it's beautiful that you're bringing that up, and you might say that that was just your expression of, of making that group so that people who have come, we'll say more from a scientific background, had some symbols to start to use and express as a way of opening up to something that's much greater. And even if they seem to cap off at the energy, like all is energy, that's a pretty strong symbol of, of power. And I always say all power is of God. So power would really not be of time and space. So that's where when we stop it in time and space, then we, we've still missed, we're still going one step closer. We're going as close as we can go to go, oh my gosh, I was wrong about time and space too. I was wrong about energy. Isn't that fun? Because energy seems to have a magnitude with it. Energy can seem to be measured and it still has the definition. And therefore, just by it being definable within a context of science, you might say the far reaches, mm -hmm. <laughs> farthest reaches of science, it still comes down to humbly accepting, oh, I am a creation of, of God. I choose the second place to gain the first. I choose to be a creation of God to recognize my true identity. Instead of thinking I am a creator in time and space, a manifester, or even pure energy. <laughs> Imagine that. I am pure energy. Well, that's that's a good symbol too, because th that certainly doesn't seem to be have a body. <laughs> but ultimately it comes down to that I am as God created me. I like that song, Forever, that Kenny Loggins did. What did I love about the song was the very end of the song. Always thought I'd be, I'd be yours. And then the, the music goes up and it just ends with a huge crescendo. Always thought I'd be yours. It's really just saying to God, always thought I'd be yours. Mm -hmm. I, I hear these uh, songs in my mind all the time. Uh, some of you might remember Cher and Peter Cetera did that song, I am the one that exists for your honor. I am the being you've been thinking of. Your will is forever, knowing together that we are it all in the glory of love. The Holy Spirit gives me yes. slightly. Great Peter, Cher, if you're watching, on YouTube or whatever, pardon the, but this is the Holy Spirit sings songs of gratitude just to, to the one, to the source. And even Jesus Christ, you might remember from the Bible, why do you call me good? He says, the Father is good. You see how he's like the Zen master, he's pointing at beyond everything of time and space, as he's speaking to a crowd. Why do you call me good? Like, don't even tag the body of Jesus as good. He's, he's that impersonal. He's that, I and the Father are one. Why do you call me good? He's, he's give all the glory 
to the Creator, all the glory, and let go of everything else in in that awakening. And that's that's actually the key. Thank well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank thank you. you. That was Beautiful. wonderful. <laughs> okay. Beautiful. We can we can just open it up and see if we've got any more questions here or in our virtual audience. Just candy raised your hand. Candy. Candy. Yeah, while we're getting candy online, I just felt to share, like, I was noticing that I call you Mystic David Hoffmeister every time you've been here, but for that exact reason, because I'm I'm witnessing to you not teaching something, but pointing to something that's an experience, and that yeah. feels like a yeah. great gift. Yeah, happily pointing. Happily <laughs> pointing. Watch the happily. <laughs> and we have with us today the Pointer Sisters. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited. And I just can't hide it. I'm about to lose control, and I think I like it. <laughs> good morning, Candy. Good morning. Um, can you hear me? Loud and clear. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, I actually have a couple of questions, uh, as always. Um, and one of them is related to what you were talking about. Um, uh, the lesson that I'm, I'm doing today in the course is give me your blessing, Holy Son of God. I would behold you with the eyes of Christ and see my perfect sinlessness in you. And, and David, you said, you mentioned a line from the course uh, that says, you are the goal the world is searching for. While I was studying this lesson this morning, I noticed that I have an incredible problem asking for something for myself. In this case, admitting that I am perfectly sinless, I am perfectly innocent, that I am the son of God, a child, the child of God, the one. Uh, everything that you were mentioning intellectually, I get it. But there's something deep inside that says, how dare you think that you're so great? How dare you think you're so full of value, worth, whatever. So it's an, I, I realize intellectually it's an incredible attack upon myself and obviously um, that projects into the world. And so my question again is on the practical side, what can I, anybody do to, to deal with that, to let go of that feeling? Because now that I, I became really aware of this, I've noticed that past lessons haven't gone that far deep, probably because of this, because there's a resistance inside. And uh, obviously I would like to let go of that. <laughs> so if you could share uh, your insight, that would be wonderful. Yeah, that what you're describing, and, and everyone in this world has encountered that as, as they do the course. So it's very common to have this intense reaction or resistance come up even to the text or the workbook lessons, even if you just pop it open and go right to the ma teacher's manual, you'll notice that the, this ego will react and rear its head immediately with this course. And it's because the shadow, what Carl Jung called the shadow, which is the unconscious mind, is just a pool of unworthiness. It, that's why it's called dark. That's why it's called the shadow. And nobody talks about the light unconscious mind because when the mind is totally integrated, it, it springs into this awareness that it is light. I am the light of the world. I am perfectly light. I am pure light. So there's this unconscious pool, almost like if you were sitting on a keg of dynamite. Um, this unconscious pool of unworthiness. And the ego speaks first. So typically when people wake up in the morning as they're going through their mind training, the ego will try to get in with some ranting um, right away, before you can even get your eyes open and get, get your course book. Wash your face, brush your teeth, and get your course book. The, the ego is going to try to zip in some rants, because it it is trying to protect its position of guilt. And guilt and unworthiness go hand in hand. So what you have to say to yourself is, oh, okay, I'm going to undo all these unconscious beliefs, through the guidance of the Holy Spirit, through miracles, that's why it's called A Course in Miracles, not A Course in Revelation, because it's 
if if you had revelation, you wouldn't need a course in miracles. You know, light knows itself and knows everything as itself. And then you're going to go through a, a lot of experiences. And I can tell you that experiences undo beliefs because a, an assumption is just a conclusion based on everything that you believe and the human being has a lot of assumptions. But as you go and just practice every day, practice with what's given you, your prayer there from the beginning of the show this yesterday, you've got your prayer there in hand, yes that's good. You've got your tools for the to, for the ego, like here, here's my prayer. You, it could be workbook lessons, it can be your holy encounters, your mighty companions. Everything that's going to be during your day is going to be washing and rinsing that unconscious unworthiness. You know, and then you start to see the symbols come all around you. I remember when I was a child, I think they had a coffee commercial. I don't know if it was maybe Maxwell House or something, but they have all these little jingles. And I remember watching, I would watch TV, I, I Dream of Jeannie and Beverly Hillbillies and The Munsters and all my, Adam's Family, all my shows, you know, Lucille Ball and I Love Lucy, da da da. But they had commercials. Remember, it was like a, a coffee commercial. The jingle comes on in the background. Be good to yourself, it's important to do. So be good to yourself, there's only one you. Now, I'm like, whoa, that's, that's the Holy Spirit. My God. It was in the coffee commercials in between my favorite shows. It was flooding me. You know, it was uh, Petula Clark. My love is warmer than the warmest sunshine, softer than a sigh. My love is deeper than the deepest ocean, wider than the sky. My love is brighter than the brightest star that shines every night above. And there is nothing in this world that can ever change my love. Oh my God! Mm. You mean I've been serenaded all these years? Even while I believed I was a human being, the Spirit was singing, singing, singing. The support, as you start to feel the worthiness, like, oh, I, I am worthy of healing. I am worthy of love. I am worthy of freedom. I am worthy of happiness, peace of mind. Then these miracles convince you of who you are. And you can just go as fast as you're ready to go. I mean, the, the willingness and readiness, when they combine together, is a force so powerful that the ego doesn't shake when willingness and readiness come together. The ego dissolves. It doesn't even have time to shake and tremble uh, at, at being undone. It, it actually dissolves in the light when the willingness and the readiness are there. So you can say, I'm going to acknowledge that I still have some resistance there. So maybe I'm not completely ready and Jesus isn't going to hurl me back into the light. Because that would be very frightening. Uh, and it's going to be a, a transformation, it's going to be a retranslation of all the symbols. And it's just going to come at its own pace. And it's the Holy Spirit's pace, really. The human beings don't have control over that. They just basically pray and open up, and the Holy Spirit does it perfectly at that pace. So, you can just remember that, that, that whenever you feel that reaction and resistance come up, you just kind of have to let it come and then say, thank you for sharing. Uh, I'm moving on with my miraculous day now. Uh, it's almost like, uh, uh, you know, it coming up at the foot, foot of your bed like a little gremlin and trying to go, boo! And you're like, thank you for sharing. Uh, and now we move on. And and you have that steadiness to just go on with what's given you for the day, knowing that the strength of God goes with you, and you have all the angels and everything supporting you at accepting your own worthiness. And there will come a day when when you'll be able to, to behold that those words actually reflect what you feel. I am the holy child of God. Uh, I'm thinking um, th that's extremely helpful, first of all, thank you so much. 
Um, I had an experience yesterday. I, I had a small accident at work. Uh, I was rearranging the shelf, well, this huge thing with lots of boards. And I removed something from one of the shelves, a box, and, and this board just slipped down and fell on my foot. And uh, so, so my foot is bruised. And uh, I'm thinking that, that that could also be seen as a miracle because um, in a way it has made me a little less mobile. And it, 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 it brought to my mind, or the, my first reaction was, oh God, okay, I'm, it's okay, it, it happened. I must be thinking something that is off or I'm, I'm supposed to learn something from this. So I don't know what it is. Um, so I just said, okay, Holy Spirit, I leave it to you to make it obvious to me what it is that I need to learn, what I need to let go of. So that was my first reaction. And then I went to health services well, you know, bureaucratic protocol, you have to report accidents and things like that. Um, and, and I'm thinking now, and I was thinking this morning when I realized this thing about the resistance in terms of accepting who I really am, um, that that was one of the reasons probably why I had this accident because it made me think more deeply about what's going on in my head. Not that I was sitting down and thinking about it, but things just started to dawn into my awareness. And um, and at the same time asking, because I've all also had the question in my mind all this time, so how do I deal with immediate physical ailments? Like it, when you're just having a, uh, an issue with an emotion, it, I find it okay, then I can I can go through the, you know, the, 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 um, the emotions and, 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 and look at the thoughts, look at the beliefs and, and, and try to reaffirm my desire for awakening to be one with God, to basically just see from the perspective of, 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 of uh, the Holy Spirit. But when it comes to physical ailments, which I still have because of the health issues that I've had up until now, um, it's difficult to remove the focus from it when, when actually something is physically hurting. Intellectually, I can say, yep, I'm not my body and so on and so forth, but it's very difficult to remove that focus. Um, so I think I'm mixing up two things here. <laughs> um, but um, so one of the other questions I have is uh, also a very practical uh, question how do you deal with that immediacy of that pain so that you don't get stuck in the symbol? And, and um, how, how do you, like I, yesterday I was trying to just put it on the altar. I think it was that, that, that you said yesterday. And I think Andre mentioned it in Unwind Your Mind in the study group. We put it on the altar and bring it to the light and then it dissolves. So how do you do that when the pain is so immediate because you're actually suffering something? You understand it intellectually? Okay, this is a projection. This is an attack that is basically manifesting in your own body. But how do you deal with it in the moment? I, that, that's the question I have. So. Okay, very good. Well, well, I'll look at that for a second. First of all, it was wonderful when you were able, when you seemed to have the accident, although there, obviously the script is written so there aren't any accidents, but when you seemed to experience the, the thing coming down on your foot and the shelf on your foot, and then you were tempted to, the ego came rushing in, it's really good at that, it rushed right in with, what did you do wrong? What were you thinking uh, to make this happen, da da da, and, and you quickly moved over towards the miracle by saying, hmm, I think maybe this is a miracle and something good can come of this. Uh, and even like, oh, I'm, even if I'm less mobile, well, that's not going to hold me back. Maybe there's something good that's coming of this. That's moving, shifting towards the miracle of all things work together for good. Every event, encounter, circumstance is working together for good because in a unified perception, nothing is good or bad. There, there aren't good things that happen or bad things. That's very deep learning. 
And Jesus says at one point in the in the course, I believe it's back in the Manual for Teachers, that when you start to, to see that all events, encounters, situations, circumstances are helpful, that you're, it's a huge advance in the mind. You know, you're just trying to discern what's helpful and what's not helpful in your mind. So that's a, that's a great advance when you can just stop trying to question what went wrong. You can drop that question. Nothing's ever going wrong. Now you're asking a more important question, the second part, is when I'm feeling pain, then what do I do? Because everybody's so caught up on the form of things. I, I think we got these emails, uh, I must have, it was like 15 emails, all the same question. Mm -hmm. I've done lesson number 10, and why did Ramana Maharshi uh, die of cancer? I must have got that question 10 times until I finally answered it. Uh, but, but basically, it, what does that have to do with anything? Uh, what Jesus had spikes in his arms and legs, and uh, you know, we aren't called to interpret the form. In fact, in the movie we saw, um, Risen, mm. Mary Magdala basically delivered the line to our our questioning Roman. You know, so you're looking in the wrong place when you're looking for answers. He was looking for all the questions around. Where's the body of Jesus, and where can I find, you know, the, the body, and all this and this. That, she said, you're looking in the wrong place. So, you started to realize, I'm not going to go there with what went wrong, because there's no answer to that, because nothing's gone wrong. But psychologically, when you feel pain, the sickness and the pain, we'll call it wrong-mindedness. You know, you're, you're just not in your right mind when you experience pain. And that can be corrected by the Holy Spirit. Not by human beings, not by medicine, not by doctors. That nothing of this world will correct wrong-mindedness. You know, it's to think a sharpened needle pushed through your veins will ward off disease. Jesus says in Lesson 76, is not going to work. You know, he he makes fun of pills, money, protected clothing, being liked, knowing the right people. In Lesson 50, he's he's putting out all these things that will never bring you healing and happiness. So don't even bother going after them, he's basically saying. Those are magic, and they may get used by the Holy Spirit if you're too frightened, so there's nothing wrong with magic even. You know, it's just a mixture of magic and miracles, just meeting the mind in a very frightened state with a little bit of a combo between magic, things of this world, and, and the miracle. But ultimately, what I spoke about yesterday when we talked was, was the impossibility of attack has to dawn on the mind, because as long as the mind believes that it has attacked, attacked God, that's usually pushed out of awareness, attacked brothers and sisters, mother, father, sister, brother, neighbors, you know, anything like that. Like even yesterday you were saying nagged, you were a little nagged by what happened. The, there's attack, the belief in attack that's, that's in there, and that is the thing that has to be forgiven. Because just to say I am not a body, uh, that's a very helpful uh, step. But there's actually a point in the Course where Jesus, he gives the formula for healing. And here's the full formula, because it's got that little piece that you had in it, but I'm going to give you the full formula. The, you just had the first piece of it, but I'll give you the whole strand. And you can find it in the Course. The whole strand is, I am not a body, and my mind cannot attack, so I cannot be sick. It's like in philosophy, A and B, therefore C. Ooh, Jesus Christ is throwing out a little bit of divine philosophy, divine logic on the ego. I am not a body, and my mind cannot attack, so equals I cannot be sick. So let me go into those three things. If you start with the first one, you're affirming that you're something else besides the body. What are you doing when you're affirming that you're not a body, but you're affirming, pointing a direction towards the mind? You're taking it off the screen. You say, no, no, my identity is not a body. I may have use of the body for a while, maybe the Holy Spirit is still using the symbol of the body, but I am not a body. And if I'm not a body, then I must be something else. Then he's addressing where it's pointing, 
to the mind. He comes in with the mind. And my mind cannot attack. So he's saying, oh, you safely can come back to your mind. By believing you're a human being in this world, you're out of your mind. He's basically saying you're psychotic. You, you basically have had a break with reality, you've lost your divine mind sense, and, and you're out of your mind and you're playing brain. You're playing human brain, you see. If you say, I have a brain, who has a brain? I am a mind. Oh, there we go. He's Jesus, good, you're back. Because once you get back to mind, then you get back to thoughts and beliefs. And the belief in attack is not in the body. People say, oh, I have cancer. No, you don't. No one has ever had cancer. Because the one, the mind doesn't have cancer. Cancer is just a concept in the wrong mind. But the divine mind has never had cancer. I amness doesn't have cancer. It doesn't have heart, heart attacks. It doesn't have blood pressure problems, nothing. So, that's the second part, and my mind cannot attack. Now that's where you're getting in touch with all that unconscious resistance and unworthiness. Because the ego says, oh yes you did attack. You attacked God. You pulled yourself away from the Creator. That's, and the ego said, you don't think God's just going to let you get away with it. God will punish you for pulling yourself, pulling your mind away from God's mind. The Course says, I am an idea in the mind of God, Christ. And the ego says, oh no, no, you, blew, you threw that one away. You blew it during the fall for grace. And you, you can't even go back now, because God's going to punish you. God will strike you blind. God will destroy you, obliterate you if you go back. But here you notice what the second part of the equation is, is my mind cannot attack. So it's just the belief that our mind can attack, namely God, uh, but, but I mean attack anything. People say, you know, we shouldn't kill animals. Well, what's underneath that? The belief that you could attack God. Some people say, you know, we should be harmonious with nature. We shouldn't rape and pillage with uh, strip mining and all this and this. What's underneath that thought? The belief that there was an attack upon God. You see, that's what's been pushed out of awareness, is this belief that there's been an attack on God. And the second part of the equation, I am not a body is the first part, and my mind cannot attack, is absolutely essential. Because we have to come back into our divinity, divine mind. And, and that cures the wrong mind. And people have asked me for years who study the Course, they will say, they say, who in their right mind would choose to be sick? And I say, you've got it right there. Who in their right mind? No one in their right mind would choose to be sick. Sickness is a wrong-minded decision based on attack. And, and innocence, like I shared yesterday, I talked for 10 minutes, how innocence, divine innocence and attack can't go together. So, once you realize that you're innocent and therefore everyone is innocent, and there's not innocence and guilt, it's only pure innocence, then you're back to that. And then the final part is, so I cannot be sick. So, you're having experiences now that seem to be painful experiences. And you may have symptoms even in the body, but that doesn't matter. It could look, you could have creamy, beautiful skin, look like Jennifer Lawrence and everything, and still if you were feeling pain, What's the difference? You know, it's, what, what does appearance matter? What do symptoms really matter? But psychologically, as long as you're experiencing pain, that's part of your curriculum now. And that's pretty intense. And you want a contrast experience. You want an experience of joy, of no pain. And that's what's taking you, the Holy Spirit's just using that to help you lift up into that alignment with, with Divine Mind. So now you've got the full equation. So, and again, it, even if you say that to yourself when you start to experience it, you know, it's just, you might say it's like an affirmation that that inspires you to let whatever needs to come up, come up for healing release. Don't shudder when the pain comes. Just go, oh, I allow, I allow. Ali Ali income free. Come on up. Everyone's free now. I'm going to let you thoughts come up and I'm going to let you go back to the light and then you'll disappear. Mm. That's it. Oh. Wonderful. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you, Candy. That feels very deep. Uh, as I'm noticing that same resistance with the second part of the equation. My yes. mind cannot attack. It's it. That's where the unworthiness is coming from. So that it's all connected. I I'm noticing it now. Yeah. But now I understand. It's just a matter of oh, okay. Thank you for sharing. It's okay that you are there. I'm just gonna continue with my miraculous day and following the guidance of the Holy Spirit. That's basically yes. the attitude, right? Yeah, just like if, if you, if let's say you had a cut on your arm, and instead of just wrapping and binding that arm and putting that flesh under layers and layers of bandages, you just washed it, cleaned it, and let it have lots of sunshine and lots of air. Um, think of doing the same thing with your mind. You know, wash it, cleanse it, you allow it, if it's going to bleed, it's going to bleed, you know. You, People try to just put it, stop the bleeding. Sometimes if it's big, they have to have stitches, you know. Stop the bleeding, but it has to be cleansed, and it has to have a lot of, of air. Sunshine, you know, it, it, it has to be not hidden. The wound can't be hidden. The wound needs to be out in the open. And, and as you join in with these programs, if you need to cry, if you need to meet with Mighty Companions, Jason and Emily are nearby you right now, However you need to do it, even if you're not used to having people around you, let the Spirit guide you to the ones you're supposed to meet, and they'll let you cry. They'll let you ask your questions. They'll, they'll have that, they'll be like angels that will allow you to go through all those emotions, and let go of the embarrassment, and let go of the shame, even around the emotions. Because a lot of us have had that wired in our mind that you, we're not supposed to cry, we're not supposed to scream. I, Lisa today, I was having a meeting with her one-on-one -on -one today, and, and she said, did you hear me last night? I let out this huge scream in the middle of the night. She woke herself up with this huge scream. And I said, no, I'm a heavy sleeper. I, <laughs> I, I heard nothing. I mean, people tell me there's thunderstorms, earthquakes, or whatever. I'm just, I'm just waking up, you know. But, but she, I had to allow it. She just went, oh, okay. And, Time to go back to sleep. You know, she didn't make anything of it. But it just was, it was almost like a purge. It was, I just had to kind of come up and, and out, and then no no consequences, you know. It's like, yeah, okay. That, that just is what it is. You know, it's interesting that you mentioned her experience with the screen, because I, I've been having similar experiences, not with screens, but it's like, it sounds almost like someone slamming the door and I feel a pounding while I'm sleeping and I wake up. And at first I thought, well, what are my neighbors doing? And this morning I thought, that can't be my neighbors. Something's happening inside of me. I have no clue what, but okay, I won't blame the neighbors anymore. <laughs> There's nothing to blame. And, and so it's very interesting that you actually mentioned that because it's a very similar experience. And, and now I understand that something is being released who knows what, but yeah. thank God for the release, right? Yeah, that's it. I, I mentioned you'd wake up sometimes and the ego will rant. That's what the, that pounding is the ego ranting. It's pounding you into the morning. And you oh, can just say, thank you for pounding, thank you for sharing, and I've got to get on with my miracles today. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Candy. You. Thank you. Oh, boy. Your name, Candy, is even symbolic. Suzanne just came in and mm. she loves candy, so we got candy and, <laughs> and candy. <laughs> Thank you so much. I, I am. I know I'm taking up a lot of the time here. Oh, no, no. It's all for everyone. This is all for everyone. And I'm so grateful. <laughs> Thanks again. And it's so nice to meet Nikita, by the way. Mm. Thank you. So... That feels, unless there was something urgent else, it feels really, is there anyone hey, else? One. Did you, Nicholas, want to?
Yeah, it's just, um... So much confusion in my mind. It's like... Everything I've learned, I just feel... Clueless, but I feel like I still need to get something right. And... And I don't know how to, like, let go. It's like I've forgotten. And I just feel like this, this, uh, like this longing for something to happen, specifically like you to, to mm -hmm. be back, and it feels irrational, and yet I, I, like for this, for this longing, and I, f I just feel like actually terrible. And, but I just feel so confused, I don't even know how to, like, let go. So there's so much moving through, like, embarrassment. Shame of how I'm unclear. And yeah, I think it's, to me, on the surface of things, you know, it's like, you're... You seem to be 22 years old, you're newlywed, and your bride, your wife, has gone away for a week or so, or whatever. And these are the same things that, a very, very common experience for human beings, where there's a sense of longing or missing, um, you know, it's almost like you have to, again, allow all these emotions to come through, and not try to, like, rationalize them, or try to judge yourself as wrong for doing that. It's not like you came here as Santa Claus, as Saint Nicholas, where you walked in and you were expected to be a saint when you walk into this building at 22. You're experiencing the same experiences that all of us have gone through, especially when it's like a, a marriage partnership and, and there's an unexpected, uh, sudden kind of shift where these emotions are just down there and there's they just come rushing up almost without any kind of a, a sense of how they got there or it, that they were even there and then the, the temptation of the mind is to just is to like judge it and think there's something wrong with it but you know you are you have brought yourself into a context of mighty companions where you can feel whatever the feelings are and at times all of us have gone through such intense emotions that we feel disabled, absolutely dysfunctional. We just are, it's like a tsunami hits us unexpectedly and we can't function. We can't do the basic things. Sometimes we can't even speak, we can't come up with words, our bodies can't function and so forth. So, to me it's just beautiful that in a mind sense you're allowing, this is like you feel safe enough in this context to allow all these emotions up, because the, the mind has to feel safe enough even to let them come into awareness. Otherwise it's just denial and repression. And so, you know, if if all of us had, had given ourselves the permission, if all of us can look and think, my God, if I was 22 and I allowed myself to let all these emotions come up and pass through, I would be even more free and more clear in my mind because that's part of the cleansing that I was just talking about with Candy. The, the, the cleansing that has to, the cleaning of the mind, the, like Hugh, Dr. Hugh Len talks about, Ho'oponopono, the cleaning, the clearing, the cleansing. It has to happen. So it's, like Candy was saying, it's a, more of a time to be welcoming of those emotions instead of judging against them. Just like let them up, allow them up and let them pass. And it's very, very common. You know, it's like, it was it was very courageous of you to come, follow your heart, and even say, I feel I'm to be married, and you did to feel the same way, so we had that beautiful marriage ceremony at the monastery, and we still have all the pictures on Facebook, and the memories, it'll just keep going on and on. And you have all that love and gratitude for that. And there's a part in in the mind that believes it can lose what it loves. And that part is, is very dark, it's very frightened of, of loss. 
but you're just tapping into this big uh, root of loss that all human beings face. And, and you're just facing them seemingly at 22 years old instead of at 40 <coughs> or 50 or 60 or 70 or 80. And in that sense, it's just clearing you out so that you can be Saint Nicholas, eventually. <laughs> <laughs> That's what this is part. So at, at last we'll have a, a real true Saint, Lic Saint Nicholas, not a bunch of candy and, and just a big fat guy who runs around on reindeer with reindeer, you know, and comes only once a year or maybe, you know, to get the, the note. Some people believe he gets the note. Ben Snickle Day comes out a couple times a year and basically he grows a long beard and goes ho ho ho. We want saintliness. We want, we want authentic awakening. We want those who are radiating light and love and forgiveness. Those are our saints that we want. We want saints, you know, more like the Gandhis and the Mandalas and the Mother Teresas and, you know, and, you know, all the great traditions that had saints, but, but they've had to go through a clearing. Dalai Lama. Why is Dalai Lama so happy all the time? Why is he laughing and ha ha ha? He's a better Saint Nicholas than Santa Claus. I think we should have the Dalai Lama come into our tradition and, and come around and just pray and meditate with us instead of bringing these bags and boxes full of meaningless trinkets that we throw away after we play with them for a little while. You know, it's ridiculous. We, we could use that laughter, that peace, that happiness year round. So, so we're watching the, the healing of Nicholas and the emergence of Saint Nicholas, but however many tears have to come out, however intense the emotions have to be, that's just part of the, the process. And it's like, it's the same thing Candy was talking about, it's unconscious, you know, you, it, it, it can be surprising and shocking when it happens. I've had that in the parable of David where I feel all this love and connection and then suddenly the image where I was pouring all this love and affection to is suddenly gone. I would say inexplicably, you know, uh, without warning. And and that's kind of how this went. It was very quick uh, that, that Yuda went to the monastery. And so it came without warning. There wasn't like a, a preparation. But that even was used to trigger all this, this hurt that's in there, you know, and, and like Candy was saying, when she dropped the, the shelf on her foot, you know, she chose to turn it and say, hmm, this is working together, you know, for the miracle. You have to see it that way, and that's, then it starts to feel even a little lighter when you feel, oh, there's, there's something loving at work beneath this, and I can just relax more and more and let those emotions, you know, move through. Yeah, I can, I can feel how gentle it really is and, and I could even tell it was coming because I was feeling like like I was feeling this prompt even before I never mentioned it but like I feel like you know she needs something like this I didn't know it was going to happen like that but I think the part that's um, it's kidding me the most is this sense of um, yeah feeling I'm just ashamed at how much control I've been seeing in my mind, even like now, and just the resistance, like, it's just, it feels like, oh my, I think I've lost all this mind training, or all my mind training's gone to waste, cause, like, like having such a hard I'm cho choosing again. I keep choosing to be happy. <laughs> yeah, but not to put pressure on yourself. I mean, if you really look at it from the perspective of you, it took a lot of faith and courage to go through with the marriage because the ego is afraid of, of intimacy. The ego is afraid of transparency. It's afraid of joining. It's afraid of all that. So that was a huge step, and now, still, as the experience of being a newlywed, you know, I know everyone here and everyone out there can relate to, you know, the, the, the control that's involved in the husband role and the wife role. Has anybody experienced that? Eric's laughing. <laughs> Eric's. 
you know, th there's a lot of control in there. Now, if the Holy Spirit is just using it as a light symbol, almost like a light garment that you wear, uh, like Judy and Wit are using at 84 and 87, they, they're so respectful when one starts to speak and the other one wants to speak, or one wants to tell the story and the other one, then you have this just moment of, of great love and charity and they gaze into each other and then the Spirit comes out of one or the other, but they, they don't talk over each other, you know, they're, they're respectful. You know, you can tell when there's an anger there, there's the ego wants to talk over. And, you know, we, I grew up watching Green Acres, you know, <laughs> it's at Eddie Albert and Ava Gabor, you know, you are my wife, goodbye city life, you know, he was basically saying, you have to live on the farm. And she was like, I, I'm a city girl. And so, I, we watched that show over and over, we hear the song, Green Acres, but that was the same thing played out. And that's really what the whole show was, it was a comedy, but it was like that movie we just watched, um, with Steve Martin and Lily Tomlin, all of me. Mm. It was Lily Tomlin, her voice in Steve Martin's mind, and Steve Martin had his own voice, and so it was hilarious, but it was a battle going on. They were battling. They couldn't, he couldn't even walk. He was gyrating all over the place until they finally agreed to, she had the control of the right side of his body, he had the control of the left, and he couldn't even walk until they could get an agreement there. Isn't this the way marriages, a lot of marriages go? <laughs> anybody, am I speaking this? Relationships, if you're not married, anybody. <laughs> Eric is laughing so hard, <laughs> he's like, whoa, this is surreal, it's all happening. But, here you are, seemingly at 22, and, and going through this, and facing to giving over the husband concept to the Holy Spirit, and saying, you use the special relationship for your purposes, you use the husband role for your purposes, let me see it as a symbol that is being used by you for the glory of God, for the great awakening for everyone. Then, then you can start to see the control starts to fade away. So, yeah, you've just hit that root of control. And it's very common, you know. That's, I would say that's the reason ultimately why people get into marriages. They think they're getting married for love, but they're really getting married for the removal of the obstacles to the awareness of love's presence. So it's a whole different, the Spirit's got a, a different angle for the whole thing. So you're doing this for everyone, for all the married couples, mm. out of all of you seven billion, whoever's <laughs> identified in this, Nicholas, St. Nicholas is is giving you a great lesson. You won't oh. have to, you won't have to repeat this. Yeah. You won't have to repeat this like a broken record. And Eric's laughing so hard. We could just we need a camera on Eric's face to see to see what what he's got one, to see what a face looks like that's come through this storm and come out the other end. <laughs> that's good. Thank uh -huh. you. Beautiful. Thank you for coming forward today. Sarah could feel it. She, was <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she could feel it. She was like the air traffic control. Wave it in for healing here. Wave it in. She's got some more. <laughs> we fix it. Oh. There we go. I see the Christ. St. Nicholas is smiling again. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, We're, yes. I think Sarah's probably going to wrap it up. Yeah, I just <laughs> want to say thank you to everyone who's joined with us today. Thank you, David. Thank okay. you, Nikita. Thank you, Nicholas, Charles, Candy, everybody. Just really, this is what our lives are devoted to, and it's it's very authentic, and it's very natural. And so no one is trying to pretend to be in an experience they're not, and yet we have the grace of having those who can point 
to the experience so that we can relax into what's truly on offer. So thank you very much for joining with us today. And I'll be back at 10 in the morning and who knows who will join me. <laughs> it's spectacularly a surprise every day. And much love to you all. We'll have music at 7 p.m. tonight. So if you feel to just sit back and bask in the spirit singing through Eric and whoever might join him, well, that feels like a wonderful idea. 7 p.m. MST tonight. Thank you all to On Periscope and all our Zoomers.